Hello and welcome to another Scottish Mountain Walking Guide. In today's episode, I'm going slightly northwest from last week's walk to Glen Lyon to climb Stook and Lochan. Parking is at the side of the road near Loch and Dame. Parking is free and there are no height restrictions. You can probably fit around 20 cars at the side of the road. It's around two hours drive from Glasgow and two and a half hours from Edinburgh. Once again, the closest public toilet is in Colin, around 40 minutes drive away. As always, links to the west map for the route, the starting point car park and the Scottish Mountain Weather site are included in the description below. The total distance for today's walk is 8.3 kilometres with only 706 metres of ascent and it is expected to take around 3 hours and 15 minutes to walk. This is probably one of the easiest Munro's due to the starting car park being at 415 metres in altitude. The route is very easy to navigate with there being a large cairn showing where the start of the path is on the mountainside and from there there is a single clear path all the way to the top. Starting from the car park, you'll head down the road towards the dam and you cross over a bridge. You need to climb over a gate. There's a locked gate at the end of the bridge. You need to climb over that gate and follow the road up through the woods here. You'll come to the very end of the dam and continue to follow that road. You'll see a cairn, a sizeable cairn at the side of the road here. And at that point, you go off the road to your left up onto the muddy track that takes you up the side of the mountainside. This path is for the most part in good condition. There are some slightly wetter sections but it's not anywhere near as damp and boggy as last week's walk. You cut across the side of the mountain for a little bit and then you start to head directly up. And it does get quite steep and you just keep climbing up and up and up. There's a small cairn at the top here which when you've joined the ridge line here that signifies that you're going to bend to your right. Again you follow the path, it is very clear. Flattens off here at this little top and you're going to bend slightly to your left. You descend a little bit here, it's not that much and then you climb back up the other side. None of this is too difficult, there's no rocks and it's not, it's not very exposed at this point. There's a little bit drop here but you're not close to that. You follow the path and it bends round to your right and then keep following and it's very level here and flattens off. On this particular walk it was extremely windy at this point and I was leaning over sideways to try and stop myself from getting blown over. It was particularly bad right around here. Fortunately the weather or the wind died down as I went further along the, the flat bit here and then as you come to the very end there's a short steep section but it literally only takes about five minutes to climb up this bit. There is a, a large drop and you can go close to the edge and get some exposure for this very steep drop off here. But if you keep to your left as you're climbing up here, then you won't have any exposure to deal with. And then there's a little cairn at the top and it's a fairly flat top on the top of this little pointy section. From there you get reasonable views around, but you are quite away from the, the higher tops. And the return back to the car is just the same approach that you took to get there. You just follow the path all the way back down. The time is 7am in the morning. I've just arrived at the dam where the car park is for today's walk. It is windy. It's about 3 degrees but it feels a lot colder because of the wind. Nice clear skies. Hopefully get some good views today. But I'm going to have to wrap up well, I think. I'm going to have some breakfast and a hot cup of tea. Let the sun come up before I start my walk. Don't know if that will come out well in the microphone and the phone. It's times like these where you wonder if you want to even get out of the van. That wind out there is quite strong. It's now 9 o'clock, I waited around a little bit for the wind to die down. It's got quite busy. I probably. So we go down here, cross that bridge, follow the path up to the south side of the dam. And the path basically goes southwest, heads all the way up onto the ridge. And then you just carve right the ridge to the top. It should take less to get to the top. I don't know if there will be much commentary today, it's very windy. Just getting out of the wind behind these trees here, so you 
you can see where they're walking, you go down there, up the road, just up and over. Parking here, you can probably squeeze about 15 to 20 cars in the different little nooks and crannies. There's parking there. I didn't drive down that far when it was in the dark this morning. There's a car park there. And there's just bits at the side. It's glorious and sunny, but the wind is really cold. A lot of wind chill, really bites in. So I've got all my waterproofs on to keep the wind out. And my gloves on. I'm going to head off up here. I'm at the end of Giora Dam and that's not sea waves, that's just the wind. There are two paths up here, one direct wall. The other one you go by that hut over there and then cut up. I'm just going to go up this one today. We soon come to this cairn on the left side of the road and we go up onto the hillside and then follow the path, it'll go up and curve round to the right eventually. It heads in a south direction to start with. Let's keep following this path up the mountain. It should be straightforward and easy to navigate. Come to the top of that steep section and the most difficult part of the walk, you'll see this cairn. The path naturally bends to the right and it goes up and down on that top and a bit further behind it just undulates and it bends down to the right. But the better view is to the east where it's hard to hold the camera steady. The wind just gets a bit stronger the higher you go. You can see the summit over there, that's about the same height as this summit, so there's not much to go. There's a the summit over there, nice gentle walk round and a wee bit up to the end.
just looking back the way the wind there was really bad it was leading into the wind sideways just to stay upright almost blowing me off my feet and I'm enjoying this little rest from the wind the summit is just ahead very short climb up to the summit there I'm out of the wind because it's coming directly ahead from ahead this would be a beautiful day if it wasn't for that wind when it's on your face you can feel your face freezing and it's a really nice calm spot just here I'm going to head up, be on the summit in five minutes or so and then I'll show you how wild that is. Uh, just below the top, you can go up the edge here give it a little bit of the exposure of the height. The summit's just over there. I'm at the summit of Stuck and Lochin. Surprisingly, it's not as windy as it was on the way up. I'm sure if I go along to the edge there, we'll get the full brunt of it. This is lovely. Looks like this is the higher of the two tops. I need to double check that. From here, simply retrace your steps all the way back down to the car. much colder as well and that is what about 10 meters away from the summit quietest and calmest spot is right here huddled up next to the summit itself have something to eat and drink and then head back down so that's taken a little under two hours to get to the top this would make a really nice walk in the summer and a calm day
see it being large in the distance over there. A little bit of whiteness at the top. Back down at the gravel road, you see the cairn there, you just turn to your right and that just takes you straight back to the van and the car. Even now, it's really windy. It's hard to hold on to the phone. I hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you liked it, please click like. If you're not a member, of, if you're not subscribed, please click subscribe. Nice welcoming committee at the end of the walk. Let's go down this path a little bit back. Back at the car park, time's just about 12.30, so three and a half hours for the walk. You can see that cars park you know, all over the place at the side of the road here, so probably at least 20 cars can park here. The start of this walk is at 430 metres, so it makes it quite a short ascent to the summit. Bye for now. Thank you.